let's see some of the storage options associated with ec2 that how we provide storage to my ec2 instances and these are local storage which is being presented to ec2 so let me get started with explaining you the options available for ec2 storage okay now ec2 is being in development and from 15 years so obviously there is no way i can cover every aspect of it i'll try to cover the most important aspect and i'll give you some additional links so that you can reference it and learn more on that okay let me draw that what I'm discussing here, I am looking for block storage options for Amazon EC2. That's what I'm looking for here. I am trying to explain those options to you. Right. Now, this is what my physical hardware is. So this is my physical hardware, right? Or I would say physical system. On this physical system, what I would be having on this physical system, I would have my Amazon EC2 instance running. So this is where your Amazon EC2 instance is running. Now people call it just instance, they call it Amazon EC2, they call it virtual server. They are some same name, but the concept is same, right? So we have instance here, physical system is running here. Now this system needs a block storage. Block storage is when we have to boot operating system or I have to install some applications. That time I would be needing a block storage for it. So operating system like your laptop needs a hard disk. Same way instance needs a hard disk. That's we call a volume. We have two ways to present a volume. This physical system, which is combination of CPU and RAM and hard disk, there are chances that this system also has some local storage available to itself, right? Possible, right? It is a server. So there may be some local storage associated with this instance itself. What we can do, and in some instances we allow that, that this local storage can be presented as a volume to my instance here. So that is a volume, a block created, and that block is associated with my machine here, instance here. That is one way. So what we did here, we presented a local storage to the system. This one is called instance store. What is instance store? It is a local storage presented to the EC2 machine directly from the server. That's called my local storage instance store. Now, this instance store, I would say, is limited in size, right? Because there is a limit of how many disks you can put into a physical server. So this would have a limited size associated with it. But another important aspect that this one is called ephemeral storage. I would say what is ephemeral or fancy words to say temporary. So what is happening here that this physical system is running fine. But what if, if this physical system crashes? Or what if, if the hard disk on the physical system crashes, your data would be lost. So we don't recommend to keep critical components here because this one is being presented only from the local physical server. If the power goes off, if there is a hard disk failure, if there is a network issue, whatever could be, then your instance may lose the storage. So we provide this for temporarily as soon as you shut down instance and start it chances are that that time when you start it, this instance may be started on a different physical server altogether. And that time its local storage won't be available. So this is purely, purely a temporary storage. So you may think why I would use it if it is a temporary. Things like maybe you want to create a swap file. Maybe you want to store some temp data before processing. In that case, this is a good solution. But this is not for keeping things permanently. So what if, if I need to store permanently? Then we give you something else, which is called EBS elastic block store. Let me draw that. Now consider that Amazon has a very big storage array, a storage array where we have lots and lots of disk available. And from that storage array, based on the requirement you say, we can carve out for you a volume. You say, I need 20 GB of space, no problem. So we can create a 20 GB volume for you here. But this is away from physical server. So we need to present this 20 GB volume, which is created on a storage array physically separate from my server to this instance running on this physical system. So what we need for that, we leverage network there. 
So what is going to happen now that we would be having network connectivity, right? The storage server is also connected on network. This physical server is also connected on a network and we leverage network to send this block of data or make this block of data available to EC2 instances. So whatever the 20 GB we have created here for you, it is being presented to your EC2 instance here like a block volume. Technically from where it is coming, technically it is going over the network interfaces. From that network interface of the server, it goes on to the actual network. From that network, it would cross, come back, to your server here and from here it would be connected to this 20 GB. So if you are coming from physical world and if you know about a SAN, it is similar to a SAN which we are utilizing. So AWS uses which storage array? Vishal, we say we would use a customized storage array or we would say we were using a, a generic storage array. We do not want to say this is IBM, HP or Dell my guess is it's probably a system which we have developed on our own because the, the scale we are growing better is to build things on our own instead of buying things from the vendor so most probably these storage arrays are created by aws maybe i am calling them storage array it may be a completely different system right so yes exactly so we designed them so this is the second way of storage which we have presented this storage which i have presented here is called elastic block storage block storage or in the short form we call it EBS elastic block storage so this block storage is a way where I can provide storage to my EC2 machine now this one is uh, over the network do you see that answer is no you say I need a uh, um, uh, volume and we will create it for you I'll show you that in a minute so we provide that over the network to you then this one is having variety variety or not variety i would say multiple types what i mean by multiple types that you may say hey i am looking for ssd based disk i am looking for a uh, uh, general purpose disk i am looking for 3000 iops i am looking for 200 gp of capacity so there are multiple types and options available you can choose from one you require plus this one is a permanent storage right see this even if your physical server crashes, still your storage is kept separate. And I am showing 120 GB volume. Actually, what will be happening at the back end, we will be creating multiple copies of your volume. We don't charge you for that. But my guess is that at least three copies are maintained for your data. So even if one of the disk fails, then you won't have a problem. So when I say a 20 GB is given to you, that doesn't mean that we have named a hard disk of 20 GB capacity and given to you. It's a system and this system would have its own mechanism of snapshotting. It would have its own replication mechanism, but this is still kept within one facility. Amazon EC2 instances are created into a one availability zone and your storage will be given from that availability zone only. So that's how we are providing storage to the application. So EBS and instant store. EBS is more common. You can use it for any operating system need. Maybe you are looking for a database to run any type of operating system to run any type of load balance, sorry, logs to store. It is purely up to you. And good part on one single instance, you can say, hey, I am looking for one disk where I would be using operating system that should be of 10 GB and I'm looking for 3000 IO from that and I need another disk on which I am going to install a database and that should be of 200 GB and I am looking for let's say 5000 IO from that. So on the same instance, you can have multiple disk mounted and they can serve a different, different uh, capacity, different performance characteristics for you. So this is how we provide storage to your EC2 instances. Let me quickly show you how that EBS volume is created and then we will take a short break before moving forward. So give me a minute. I would go to volumes and try to show you the volume section. Okay, hopefully everyone is getting 
does ebs do multi attach across two or more instances anand there is a specific type of ebs volume which supports it but if you ask me a general question i would say no it is a one to one mapping but we have a multi attach ebs volume also which you can leverage but i would in in exam type of scenario i would say no multi attach but yes there is some instances supported but it's not generic so see this i am here on to the volume section and i can go ahead and say i am looking to create a volume i would select what type of volume i am looking for these are different characteristics gp2 stands for general purpose io1 provision iops io2 cold these are the different characteristic and good thing is click on this icon or select it and it will tell you that what maximum minimum size that particular disk would support how many iops that disk would be supporting for you so this is a good way to understand so see this if i select sc1 i can go from 125 to 16384 gb but if i am selecting let's say io2 then i can go up to 65000 gb and this much iops so it depends on what you are looking for let's say i create a gp2 volume i have to specify that size of it i would say 10 gb volume and i can put it into eu west 1a availability zone and i can add some encryption if i need to or i can add some name so let's add a name I call it 10 gb gp2 volume that's what i can select and say create volume so what happened now one disk has been created for me one volume has been created for me which is 10 gb see this one but currently it is not connected see this what i see here if we like scroll further this one says in use because we connected this to the instance we launched but this second one 1a is not connected as of now it is available so once i have a volume created i can go ahead and say okay what i want to do with this volume now i want to attach this to a volume and that time i could attach it to the instance this is my besa web server and i could attach to it now here is one important thing which you have to remember let me draw that on whiteboard so it would be easy for everyone to follow along that is very important thing you have to remember these volumes when you are creating they are specific to a availability zone let me explain what i am trying to say here give me a minute i am opening up the paint brush here again to explain you things okay all right if you remember our first first day discussion we talked about that there are regions right so this is what my aws region is now regions would be made up of what regions would be made up of availability zones so we have availability zone 1 here availability zone 2 here availability zone 3 here when you are creating a ec2 instance ec2 instance is az specific this is created into a availability zone so this is where my instance would be created and the ebs volume of that should also come from the same availability zone and it makes sense you don't want a volume to be coming from a very distant storage location because the performance would not be great so ebs volumes are presented into the same availability zone now if you have another instance which is running into another availability zone like this you can't present you can't say that hey let me disconnect the volume from here and attach this to this ec2 instance here it won't work so volumes can be attached into the same availability zone not beyond it if you need to do that you need to do one more stuff there that is called take a snapshot we support snapshot of the volume and once you take a snapshot snapshots are regional entity snapshots are regional so when you take a snapshot it is stored into region not within specific availability zone so this is where my snapshot is getting created i have taken a snapshot from a ebs volume later i can use this snapshot to create a volume into one availability zone or second availability zone or third availability zone it is purely purely up to you even snapshots can be copied across availability zone sorry across region if you want to so that is possible but a volume is a az specific entity whereas a snapshot is a regional entity right hopefully everyone is following along and understanding things now one more important stuff which lot of people do not get let me explain that stuff also let me explain that let me give you an example here to explain things let's say we are saying that we are having london as a region 
London region is made up of three availability zones, right? So there is three availability zone. Let's say AZA, there is AZB, and there is AZC. Three availability zones are there into London. For sake of discussion, let's say AZA is in southeast London. Just give me an example. Maybe let's say AZB is into North London, and then maybe AZC is into West London. Just give me an example. Now, chances are that when I have to make a selection, like if you remember, I haven't selected AZ for myself. When I selected a EC2 instance, it auto selected AZ for me. But most of time, time customers start, they may make a selection and it may happen that AZA is where 90% instances are running. Nobody is using AZB, 20% instance running, and nobody bothered to put their instance into AZC, and only 10% instance are running. This kind of uneven distribution may happen. Right. We don't want that to happen because then you are having a bigger impact and we cannot manage capacity because AZA would be always utilized high. Nobody using B and C. So that's not a good distribution of services. So what we do in that case, we randomize these on account level. So let's say that is account A here and there is account B. I am saying account. This is I am referencing to a AWS account. Every AWS account has a unique ID to identify that. So these are my AWS account and BNB. Now, AZA of account A, AZB, and AZC will be different from those account. Let me show that what I mean. So for you and me, it would look like if I am logging in, it looks I am connected to AZA, but it may happen that your AZA of account A may be pointing to north, your AZB may be pointing to south, and your AZC may be pointing to West London. And then your AZB here could be West London, AZA could be north, or AZC could be southeast. So this randomization is done for ensuring distribution of capacity properly. Now you may see, hey, why I should be worried about? Let me explain. Let's say you have a two tier application on what you are looking for. You are looking to install a web server and you are looking to install a DB server. Web server would be installed by account one, account A, and DB server will be installed by account B. Now it's a purely physical system that if you keep them as near as possible, they would have better performance. I say, let's deploy things in AZB, okay? So I say AZB means my web server would get deployed here, which will be AB North. Now, this account AZB is West, so they think they deployed in AZB, but it may end up into West London. And they can still communicate, but obviously performance would be little degraded because we are talking about miles distance between these availability zones. So how I can mitigate that? We give you something called AZ ID. So AZ name is AZA, AZB, AZC, but you should make your decision based on AZ IDs. And I can quickly show you how you can find AZ ID associated with your own account. So that can be something you should be aware when you are deploying across multiple accounts. So let me go to something called Resource Access Manager. And there you can find that information. And there are multiple ways to see that. I'll talk about that when you create networking also. That time also you can see it. So I am now going to Resource Access Manager and I would be able to see what is my distribution of account, sorry, my distribution of availability zone and your distribution within your account would also be different. It is purely done to ensure no, not creating any hotspot and to equally distribute your workload across different availability zone. So I am coming to Resource Access Manager. See this thing here? What you are seeing, my 1A is actually AZ3, my 1B is AZ1, and my 1C is AZ2. So AZ name and AZ IDs are two different things. Don't be confused with that. The AZ name is basically a uh, identification which is user friendly AZ ID is the actual anchoring to the location of that system right